is going on in this so let us work on this from step 1 to step 7 so we certainly said that this steps that we are talking about are steps which are you know kind of viewed or formulated on the basis of our present condition you know, our present state of being so all of us who are working on it you know, depending upon our condition of the self our sanskar of the self we have tried to formulate this seven steps but as our condition improves as our sanskars and our state of being improves we can probably you know shorten these steps right or we can you know why you can make final some of these steps which we have you known kept just you know kind of at one level of fineness but we can make them final so one step can be expanded into many steps sub steps because if i can see them fine you know in a subtle and subtle manner then probably more steps will be useful so this number of steps can be more or less but we have articulated it based on our present state of being so we'll start with that and we'll also see briefly that yes it can be reduced number of steps or it can even be made finer and increased but that's all will be you know on depending upon your state of being so let's look at start with this step one step one is very simple what we are saying is that this imagination is going on in the self anyway right and i have the capacity to observe to pay attention to be aware to be mindful so let us take this decision that i will observe my imagination at this moment of time and that's it so if i take this decision i am able to observe my imagination because that imagination is there anyway and i have the capacity to observe whenever i pay attention i can see this those imaginations which are going on in me at this moment of time so step 1 is just this the imagination is going on in me i have the capacity to see to observe so i decide to pay attention to my imagination i decide to observe my imagination and if i do that i am able to observe and that is it so it is just being aware just being conscious just being mindful of my own imagination that is going on in my self so we have said many times that this is a simple step but very important step number 1 number 2 when we are going through this step of observing the imagination right i don't have to react so i have to observe this imagination this you know going on in me without reacting to it without any reaction to it so whatever is going on just be observant just be aware if it is a good feeling a natural feeling let it be there just observe it if it is a bad feeling let it be there just observe it just be aware so this is what we have to do in step 1 and of course it has many implications that we have been discussing and one thing we said is that this step is the most fundamental step because all the seven steps we are anyway working on this imagination my feeling my thought my desire and therefore if i have to work on other steps i have to be at least aware of this my imagination i have to be aware of my desire thought and expectation which are there right in fact this imagination is basically constituted out of this desire thought and expectation so i just have to be aware 
I just have to be aware of it. Whatever is going on in my imagination, I just have to be aware. Just have to observe without reaction. Now, in this is step one, I can go little deeper and instead of just observing the imagination, I can now start observing the desire, the thought, the expectation that I have. So my imagination con contains all these three things my desire, my thought, my expectation, and all this put together is what is imagination. So if I make it little uh, deeper, little finer, I should be able to observe this desire, thought, and expectation. I should be able to observe my feeling, my thought that I have at this moment. Particularly this desire, this feeling is very important because this desire, this feeling is as, as the seed of this imagination. So this seed gives rise to the tree of imagination. So I must be able to identify this seed. This identifying the seed, the feeling, the desire is important because in the next two steps, we will try to evaluate this feeling. So in order to evaluate the imagination at any moment of time, it is better to evaluate the feeling which is there as the seed of this imagination. For two reasons. Number one, the seed is something very definite, you know, which I can directly observe and start evaluating. Thought is quite spread and expectation is still spread over. So seed is something very definite, very concrete, which I can observe, I can see and I can evaluate. So this is number one. Number two, it is possible to evaluate this seed, this desire, this feeling directly by applying this basic reference of my natural experience. By direct applying the criterion of natural experience. So if I ask this question whether I have to nurture my body or harm my body, Right. This has to do with my feeling, my desire. I can ask my natural acceptance and the response would be definite that I have a natural acceptance for nurturing my body and not for harming the body. But if you come down to the level of thought that how do I nurture my body by eating rice or eating wheat, then, you know, it is not as simple to evaluate it on the basis of my natural activities. You will have to go back to this nurturing the body that if the rice is nurturing my body, I will eat the rice. If the wheat is nurturing my body, I will eat wheat and I will decide for one of them, you know, on the basis of the availability of it on the basis of the possibility of production and all those things are there. But as far as my natural acceptance is concerned, it is for nurturing the body. So that desire, that feeling can be directly evaluated by natural acceptance. So we'll keep doing that. We'll keep focusing on desire, the feeling, right? being aware of it, being conscious of it without any reaction. So whatever we the desire, whatever we the feeling, good or bad, natural or unnatural, making us happy or unhappy, I just have to observe without any reaction. I don't have to try to hold on to it or try to remove it. Just observation. Just the observation.
just being aware without reaction. So with this awareness, I can see the desire that is going on, the feeling that is going on in me at this moment of time. Once I'm aware of it, I can go to step two and step three. In step two, I'm asking whether this feeling is natural for me or unnatural for me. Is it naturally acceptable or not natural? In step three, we are asking whether this feeling is leading to state of harmony and happiness or leading to contradiction and happiness. So very simple step two and three, just asking, just evaluating my desire that I have at this moment, my feeling that I have at this moment, whether it is natural for me or not natural for me, whether it's leading to harmony and happiness or it is not leading to harmony and happiness. So whatever we are feeling at this moment, the desire at this moment, we ask this question. Is it natural? Is it leading to happiness? When you work through exercise two and three, one important conclusion that we are able to draw is that Whenever I have a feeling which is natural, it leads to harmony and happiness. Whenever I have a feeling which is not natural, even for a moment, right, we find that it is leading to disharmony and unhappiness. So ultimately, we can see that it is my feeling, my thought, which is making me you know, happy or unhappy. A thought which is natural, a feeling that is natural leads to a state of harmony and happiness within. A feeling, a thought which is not natural, it leads to a state of contradiction and unhappiness. So my happiness or unhappiness depends upon my desire, my feeling, my thought. So working through step two and step three, I can see that a natural thought feeling, a natural thought leads to harmony and happiness. An unnatural thought, a natural feeling leads to disharmony and unhappiness. So my happiness or unhappiness depends upon my feeling, upon my thought. So this is an important conclusion. Because if I can see that my happiness and happiness has to do with my feeling and my thought, right? Then the next question is that who is deciding this feeling, this thought that I have at this moment? And that is the question we are asking in step four. So if I have a feeling of opposition in me at this moment of time, right? Who decided it? Was it decided by some external physical condition? Was it decided by some other human being? Or was it decided by I myself ultimately? This we have to ask to ourselves. And when we ask this question to ourselves, we find that though my attention towards this was drawn by some physical condition or my, you know, by some other human being, 
but ultimately it is me who is deciding which feeling to have right with my when i am interacting with the world outside so i have taken this example that using bad words may you know listening to that bad words you may have a feeling of opposition or you may have a feeling of pity feeling of kindness for the other person who is using bad words so that choice is always there so even if there is a bad word coming i have the choice to have the feeling of opposition or feeling of compassion feeling of kindness for him and that makes all the difference that makes all the difference so if i take the decision in favor of <coughs> a feeling of opposition i am in a state of contradiction and unhappiness if i take a decision in favor of the feeling of kindness compassion i am in a state of harmony within and happiness within and this choice is always there with me given any external circumstance the choice is always with me as to which feeling to have a feeling which is natural or a feeling which is not natural and that decides whether i will be in a state of harmony and happiness or otherwise so if i can see this the important conclusion that i can draw is that it is me who is deciding the feeling you know at this moment the desire at this moment right so ultimately it is me who is deciding the other person or the external environment can at the most draw my attention to us but which feeling to have is my decision and if i can see this i can see that i am responsible for taking this decision in favor of this particular feeling this particular desire which is giving rise to a state of harmony and happiness or otherwise so ultimately i am responsible for my happiness or unhappiness because this happiness or unhappiness is based on my feeling my thought that i have at this moment which is based on my own decision so i am responsible for my happiness or unhappiness and if i look at it you know consistently over a long period of time i can say that yes i am totally responsible 100% responsible for my unhappiness the situation outside may be favorable or unfavorable but by observing this now situation it is me who is deciding which feeling to have which thought to have and this feeling this thought is deciding my state of being whether i am in a state of harmony or disharmony so i am responsible i am responsible for my happiness or unhappiness i am 100% responsible if i can see this this is very important conclusion if i can see that i am 100% responsible for my happiness or unhappiness right then <clears throat> i develop this mentality that i have to improve upon myself i have to work upon myself i have to transform myself so that willingness to change to improve comes that is number one important conclusion the number two conclusion is that i realize that my happiness or unhappiness is not caused by the other person other conditions it is ultimately decided by me therefore i become free from complaints for others so we have lot of complaints from others right we think that we are unhappy because of them and therefore we want them to change and they don't change so we have lot of complaints 
So now that I can see that, yes, I have to change myself. I have to improve upon myself. I have to transform myself in terms of having the right feeling and right thought based on right understanding. Then I work for it. Number one. Number two, I am not you know having complain against other because i don't think that they are source of my happiness or unhappiness they might have triggered some process so they are responsible for that but as far as my happiness and unhappiness is concerned it is my decision to have this feeling or that feeling meaning and therefore i am 100% responsible for my happiness or unhappiness so this is what we are trying to work through in step 4 so step one, two, three, you know, is one group of kind of observation. So observing the imagination, the desire, the feeling, evaluating it in terms of whether it is natural or unnatural, whether it is leading to happiness or unhappiness. So all these three steps, it will become, you know, kind of sharp enough in our perception then we can combine these three steps, one, two, and three. And the outcome of this step, first three step is that a feeling which is natural leads to a state of harmony and happiness, a feeling which is unnatural, the desire which is unnatural, leads to a state of disharmony, contradiction, and unhappiness. Therefore, I have to take care of my feeling. I have to ensure that I have the right feeling so that I can be in a state of harmony. And for that, we were now looking at this step four. We were trying to decide who is taking the decision for the feeling, for the thought. Because if I want to correct my feeling, and if I know what is the source, who is taking the decision, I can work there. So now in step four, I've been able to realize that yes, it is me, the self, which is taking decision about the feeling or the thought, which in turn is leading to a state of harmony and happiness or disharmony and unhappiness. So therefore, we have to work with myself, improve upon myself. With this clarity, now we can move on to step five, where we are saying that, okay, fine, I am responsible depending upon you know, my own decision for the feeling, for the thought, I'm in a state of harmony and happiness or disharmony and unhappiness. So let us look at this. How do I set this, you know, my uh, state of being right? Or what is the problem with my present state of being? For that, we are asking this question in step five as to what is the basis of my taking decision for a feeling, for a thought? What is the basis of my taking decision in favor of a feeling, in favor of a thought? So if I look at that, I find that when I'm thinking of my feeling my desire regarding any particular reality, right? then this feeling, this desire may be based on my understanding of that reality or in the absence of my understanding of that reality, my assumption about that reality. My assumption about that reality. So we are trying to observe this, that if I am deciding for my feeling, say, let us say, for, you know, a person, you know, in my family, or for a friend. Now, if I have understood myself as a human being, if I have understood my family member as a human being, then, I will have the feeling okay. 
which is right, which is natural. And by having that feeling, I will be in a state of harmony and happiness. So if I understand myself, the other human being, you know, as a human being, as coexistence of self and body, you know, that I can see that what is naturally acceptable to me is the feeling of trust and not mistrust, respect, not disrespect. Therefore, I will have the feeling of trust, feeling of respect for the other person. And with that feeling, I will be in a state of harmony and happiness. On the other hand, if I have not understood myself, if I have assumed something about myself and I have assumed something about the other human being, if I do not understand myself as a human being and the other as a human being, then I might have some assumption about myself and about the other human being. And then depending upon that assumption, I will decide for my feeling. So if that assumption is right, I will decide for a right feeling. If that assumption is wrong, I will decide for the wrong feeling. And that is what is happening. So this we have to observe. This we have to observe that depending upon whether we have the right understanding of the reality to which I, we are trying to relate. So is it that I have understood that reality and therefore my feeling is based on that or I have not understood the reality, I have assumed something about the reality and my feeling is based on that assumption. So the important outcome of this step five is that if we really want to live with right feeling, with right desire, it leads to harmony and happiness, then I have to ensure right understanding of the reality that I am living with, right? reality that I am trying to relate to. So this is the important conclusion of step five. And as we said in the beginning that we have to understand since we are related to the whole existence, therefore we have to understand the whole reality of existence with which I am related. So I have to understand them and I have to identify the feelings which are natural in the process of my interaction with that reality. Right. And that will be a right feeling, a natural feeling. <clears throat> So two things we will do now. Number one, we'll try to understand the whole existence. Right. And particularly we'll try to understand what are the feelings which are natural to me when I'm interacting with this whole existence. So this is what we are trying to do in step six. Now we are trying to look at this in part A, we are asking this question as to which feeling is naturally acceptable to me. The feeling of relationship or feeling of opposition. Feeling of harmony or feeling of disharmony. Feeling of coexistence or feeling of struggle. So let us ask this question to ourselves and see what is the answer. So if I look at this, and if I ask myself, which we have been asking, and we can ask even right now, you know, and see that what is naturally acceptable to me is the feeling of relationship, feeling of harmony, feeling of coexistence, and not otherwise. So this is what is naturally acceptable to me. These are the feelings which are naturally acceptable to me in my relation with the other human being, with the rest of nature, ultimately with the whole existence. So this is what I'm able to see in part 6a, part a on 6, step 6, part a. And in part 2, I'm trying to understand this relationship, harmony and coexistence. And as I mentioned, that all that we have been talking about, starting from the first course on UHB 1, and now UHB 2 and this practice, We have been trying to understand this relationship, this harmony, this coexistence. 
so that we will continue to do as part of step 6 part b but in part a i am able to see that it is the feeling of relationship feeling of harmony feeling of coexistence which is naturally able to me not the feeling of opposition or disharmony or struggle and as i see this in step 6 that these are the feeling which are naturally acceptable to me then in step 7 all that i have to do is to make sure that this moment of time my feeling is in line with the feeling of relationship feeling of harmony feeling of coexistence and not otherwise and if i can do this in step 7 if I can ensure that my feeling at this moment is in line with this feeling of relationship, harmony, and coexistence, then with this feeling, I will be in a state of harmony within, state of happiness within. And if I can make sure that every moment I am observant of my feeling, my thought, every moment I am ensuring that my feeling is in line with relationship, feeling of relationship, harmony, and coexistence. And it is not otherwise. So this is what I have to do in step seven. You can see step six and seven, and particularly seven, is a very natural outcome of step six. Nothing, and nothing kind of drastic has to be done. Just a simple process. In step six, I am able to see that it is the feeling of. Relationship harmony and coexistence with the natural acceptable. Right. So all that I have to do in step seven is to make sure that the feeling I have at this moment, the next moment, and next moment is in line with relationship harmony and coexistence and not otherwise. So if I can do this, I can be sure that I am in a state of harmony and happiness with unperturbed by any external condition. So this is, these are the seven steps that we have to work through. And if we work through these seven steps, we can keep, you know, kind of improving upon ourselves you know, and kind of transform ourselves. So this is what we in, been doing from step one to six. You may continue first. A while, if you or uh, you know, you can work with this.